Morning. Sorry, this one's in English. Um, my Swedish is about good enough to order a beer and it's a bit early for that. Hopefully that's okay. So I'm going to talk about making a map out of impact maps. Uh, how many people in the audience have got any experience with what an impact map is? Excellent. Lots of you. So what is an impact map? It's a strategic planning technique. It prevents organizations from getting lost when building products and delivering products. I find it incredibly useful for helping have conversations with stakeholders, with managers, with the product teams actually working on things around what they're building, how they can prioritize and to make sure that you are connecting everything back to the central goal. An impact map might look something like this. It's a little bit messy. It's often done up on the wall. You move your post-its around. You figure out as you're going on what it is. You've got your goal, which is what is it you're trying to achieve as a business. That might be something as obvious as increase sales of your product. It might be something more abstract like, well, we want to increase brand awareness, brand perception. We want to be uh, bumping that up. That might be your goal as well. Outside of that, you've got your actors. That can be things like the customers, the marketing teams. It can be prospects. It can be a range of other things. Your actors are the people you're trying to influence. Your impacts connect into your actors. Your impacts are the behaviors you want to change or encourage. That might be, we want to increase our sales. We want them to start signing up online. We want them to give us money. But it might also be, we want them to be tweeting about how wonderful our brand is. That might be an, action, an impact you're trying to encourage. And then on the outside of that, all of those things are your deliverables. And this is where, in a lot of cases, you'll take an existing backlog, you'll run it through an impact map, and you'll take all of those deliverables that are in your backlog, and you'll try and connect them to an impact, to an actor, to a goal. And then you can have the conversations with the customers around, well, OK, sorry, with the stakeholders, with does this add value? Is this driving your goal forward? Is this going to help achieve the things you're trying to achieve, or is it not? But is an impact map actually a map? It's not. One of the best definitions I've seen for what a map actually is, is a map requires an anchor, a position, a movement. And one of the easiest ways to understand if something's a map or not, pick it up and move it around on the space in front of you and see if it affects the information you're showing. This definition is from a guy called Simon Wardley, who is an expert in mapping. He's got his own kind of mapping called Wardley mapping. If you haven't looked into it before, I recommend it. It's a really, really good way of understanding the value chain. But his point here is an awful lot of the things we talk about when we say a map is not actually a map. They're just diagrams. So here we've got back to the impact map I showed earlier. All of this information is there. If we change it and move it around, has that actually changed the information we're showing? Is there any difference between these two maps other than this one's a little bit neater? No. How about if we move it even more and make it really neat looking? See, now it's in kind of an order. But again, there's no real difference between this and any of the other maps. But we can change that. We can add in an abstraction axis at the bottom. And we can say, going from the left to the right, takes us further and further away from our goal. Things become more abstracted, and we need to understand how we get back to that goal. And then we can set a priority axis going up. So the things at the top are the things we think are the most important. And that covers your deliverables and hypotheses. It covers your impacts, your customers, and your goal. What is your most important actor? In this case, it's the customer. What is your most important impact? What is your most important hypothesis or deliverable? And by having that in place, you can sit there and have conversations with your stakeholders around the priorities of things they're doing, not just how they relate to the goal, but how they genuinely help you deliver value to the customer, value to the business, and value to the goal. And that's always been my challenge when working with companies and looking at impact maps is how to differentiate between a good idea that does deliver the goal but actually only services some of the secondary actors. How do you compare that to something that maybe isn't quite as um, valuable, but is offering you more impact on the people who are actually your primary actor, your primary customer? And it's down to the business to make those decisions. But by putting this abstraction and, um, and priority axis in place, it allows you to have those conversations in a way that an impact map that doesn't have the prioritization doesn't necessarily do. I've also got a couple of other changes that I'd like to propose when you think about working in this way. Because 
we've talked about the map itself, we've talked about how the um, prioritization helps, but one of the other things that I've found is that they're quite easily a theoretical model when you take customers or stakeholders through them. They're interesting, they look at them and they go, okay, great, but how does, how does this relate to the things I do day to day? And the first way you can help them with that is by improving the way you talk about impacts. So impacts are about how the, you want the customers to change, they're about how you want behaviors to change. If you align those to the OKRs or to the KPIs that a team is working on, you can really help drive forward in the right way towards the right goal. One of the things we've noticed when we've been doing this, when we haven't been aligned or where we haven't had an aligned impact to an OKR is stakeholders or product owners can get really excited by an idea. We had one where the uh, stakeholder was looking at search on the website and they're like, search is really great. If we can increase search, um, almost no one's using it. If we can increase our search, that will make a huge difference. That's a great impact. It will go on through there. When we checked their OKRs, however, when we looked at what that particular team was measured against, this was never going to help them deliver. It was never going to help them achieve the goals that their individual team had been set. But we could identify that there were other teams out there that this was useful for, that this was an OKR that was being done by an external team. We can hand this feature over to them. So not only by aligning these to internal OKRs for a company can you help to decide, is this the right thing for the team to be doing? you also start to be able to very easily see, is this the right thing for a different team to be doing? And that's often a problem we see in large organizations, is really good ideas get put into teams that have capacity rather than that are the right team to be picking it up. And so if you help them by aligning their OKRs with the impacts you're talking about, you help them be able to have the conversation back to the stakeholders, to the senior management saying, we love your idea. We are not saying that you, Mr. Senior Manager, are you know, telling us the wrong thing. But we are saying that maybe it should be this team over here who have the right skill sets, tools, and knowledge to build this, even though they've got a bigger backlog, than putting it into our team because you think you'll get it quicker. The other thing I'd like to suggest when you're looking at impact maps is not using the word deliverables. So when you talk about impact maps, that final section is your deliverables. And that comes from the fact that a lot of impact maps are done with existing backlogs. My challenge with this approach is it links you very firmly into a feature-driven conversation. Rather than thinking about the value to the customer, which is what the goal is all about, you're talking about the deliverable, you're talking about the physical feature you're going to produce, as opposed to thinking about what is the smallest, simplest, easiest thing you can do to prove that this idea is the right direction to be going in. So if you start, instead of talking about deliverables, you talk about hypothesis. So what is the hypothesis you are trying to prove? And then under that hypothesis, you can have a series of experiments. You can have as many experiments as you like, but if you start with one that is a measurable experiment that can then track across. So you go, well, we will experiment with this to try and influence this impact, this OKR, against this actor, and this will help us achieve the goal. What is the smallest way we can do that? What is the simplest way we can run this through the process and we can understand is this actually helping us achieve our goal as an organization, as a team, and is it actually bringing in any value, any money? The other side of that is when you're working with deliverables themselves, it turns the team into a feature factory. So when all of your conversations with your stakeholders are about deliverables, they start expecting the deliverables to be done. And if you get halfway through a feature, and you realize, actually, this is probably not a useful thing to be doing, it's too late to change it. There is a sunk cost that the business is thinking, well, we've already gone this far. We've told all of our stakeholders that this is coming. We've got to do it. If you've been talking about hypotheses, at any point during this process, you can turn around and say, the hypothesis has been disproven. We need to pivot and try something else. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you can just turn up day one and go, this is how we've changed it. But when you start changing the language that you're using when you talk to the stakeholders, you talk to the business, you start being able to influence more effectively how they understand the work. And one of the biggest challenges I've seen is that differentiation between the feature factory team that just has this backlog for the next three to six months that's predefined to a team that's actually able to say, well, here is, here is the impact on value if we continue building this. So quick summary. I would suggest if you've done um, impact maps before, have a go uh, by adding a priority axis when you're talking to customers, when you're talking to stakeholders. See if that helps the conversations go through. 
try aligning the impacts you're talking about to the team's OKRs that you're working with. And instead of talking about deliverables, try talking about hypotheses and experiments and see if that makes conversations easier with the business around how you can pivot as you go through. Thank you very much. <laughs>